If you're shooting new brass in your belted Magnum rifle, chances are you have grossly excessive shoulder head space. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why that happens, and I'm gonna introduce Peterson cartridge long Magnum brass for both seven rem mag and 300 wind mag. In fact, we're also gonna put it to the test. Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. Here on the channel, we've talked a lot about belted magnums and non-belted magnums. If you're looking at something like 7 PRC or 300 PRC, one of the advantages of these newer cartridges is the fact that they don't have a belt because a belt is not needed. Now that doesn't mean you, that you need to go and throw away your 7 rem mag or your 300 wind mag. Far from the truth. But what you do need to know is how headspace works for a belted magnum, especially if you're reloading, and some of these problems that can arise and how you can address those problems. So let's start with belted magnum headspace. What I have here is a diagram that I created that shows the two different headspacing points on a belted magnum cartridge. There is the primary headspace, which is basically established with the front of the belt to the belt cut out in the chamber, right? That front surface is gonna slide forward as the cartridge is chambered and it's going to hit the chamber where there's a shoulder. That is essentially your headspace with a belted magnum. Now you also have clearance between where the shoulder is on the cartridge and where the shoulder area is in the chamber. And for whatever reason, probably because of two different tolerances for headspace at the belt and at the shoulder, there is typically way more clearance between the shoulder of the shell casing and the shoulder area of the chamber than is necessary. Let's talk about some downsides of this. The first is longevity. If you're blowing that shoulder forward 10, 20 thousandths of an inch on the first firing, you are definitely shortening the lifespan of that case. It stretches quite a bit. The second is accuracy with brand new shell casings, whether it be factory ammo right out of the box, or it be cases that you've hand loaded and are going to shoot for the first time. Now with careful reloading, you can fire form the case and then carefully control your shoulder bump and achieve better precision and less incremental degradation of your longevity with subsequent firings if you're reloading in a careful manner. Let's break down the numbers here. Okay, so here are the SAMI specs for 300 win mag. And what I'm looking at here is what we call the base to datum value. For the cartridge, that's from the back of the case rim, the case head, all the way forward to what we call the datum point. The shoulder is a sloped region of the shell casing, and we don't want to take any reference values from either end because there is dimensional variation there. So what we do is we take a particular diameter. This is an actual headspace comparator right here. This is of a particular diameter. For both of these belted magnums, it's 0 0.420 inches. And what we do is we measure basically where the case goes in to the comparator, and we get that same base to datum value here. It's from the end of the case head to that 0 0.420 inch diameter line that's more or less in the middle of the shoulder area. So let's take a look at the chamber area and the shell casing, right? You've got ammo on the top and you've got the rifle chamber on the bottom in your SAMI diagram. And each of those has tolerance allowed, right? There is a certain amount of variation that is permitted. So for the chamber, you have a minimum of 2.2791. Max is 2.2891, right? The cartridge, minimum 2.2630, maximum 2.2. 7-0. So when we go to compare the minimum and maximum clearance between the shoulder of the shell casing and the shoulder area of the chamber, we want to basically look at the min and max for that chamber base to datum value and the min and max for the cartridge value. To get minimum clearance, we want to take minimum chamber and maximum cartridge. That is literally the scenario where you get the minimum clearance between the shoulder area of the shell casing and the shoulder area of the chamber. So if we run that math, given the SAMI specifications, minimum clearance is 9.1 thousandths of an inch. 
Now, if we take the other extreme where we have maximum chamber and minimum cartridge, then we can end up with a worst case scenario of 26.1 thousandths of an inch. Now remember, when you're bumping your shoulder, reloading precision rifle bottleneck cartridge ammo, you want a shoulder bump, a clearance value of about two and a half thousandths of an inch. So this is literally 10 times that. This is definitely not what you want. And if we look at seven rem mag, we're gonna look at these same values. Well, it turns out min clearance is also 9.1 thousandths of an inch and maximum clearance is also 26.1 thousandths of an inch. So this was obviously coordinated with Sammy and with Remington and with Winchester, right? So this is where the problem lies, is there's gonna be a lot of variation in your clearance and you're always gonna have excessive clearance. Okay, enter the Peterson Long Magnums. Peterson Long Magnum cases have the shoulders that are pushed forward compared to other Sammy spec brand new shell casings. And the goal here was just to take up that excess space that's not necessary to be there, right? What you really wanna be careful about is that chamber minimum base to datum, right? We can't go longer than that, but we can get close to that. So this is currently available in seven rem mag long and 300 wind mag long, and we have both here that we're gonna be putting to the test. So what I did was I took some measurements of this Peterson long brass, and I had a seven rem mag piece of factory ammo and some cases for 300 wind mag, both of them brand new shell casings. And I just took some measurements so that we could compare. So for seven rem mag, the Peterson long base to datum was 2.1185. The standard Magnum, this one was a federal shell casing in federal factory ammo, 2.1085. So the difference is 10 thousandths of an inch. The Peterson Long Magnum Brass for 7 Rem Mag has the shoulder 10 thousandths forward compared to the federal. And that means upon first firing, we're going to have 10 thousandths less stretch. That is huge. This is going to help our case longevity immensely and could definitely make a difference in the kind of precision, the group size that we're gonna see you know, with our, our groups. We'll also maintain more continuity in case capacity between the first firing and subsequent firings. So our load development should vary less between first firing and subsequent firings. Okay, 300 wind mag, Peterson log, 2.2735 inches base to datum and I had Lapua cases, so I measured one of those, 2.2640 inches. The difference is nine and a half thousandths of an inch. So the 300 wind mag was also approximately 10 thousandths forward of where it was on factory shell casings. Again, a big difference. This is actually really compelling. Now I understand exactly why Peterson did this. Okay, so let me go over my reloading setup. I have, at this point in this project, loaded five 7 rem mag and five 300 wind mag. And what we're using to reload is RCBS Rock Trucker Supreme. I have a die set for 7 rem mag, standard full length two die set, and also the same set in 300 wind mag. Uh, we're using the Charge Master Link to do our powder charges. Uh, Ramshot Grand Powder. This is one of the newer powders that we've gotten. It's a ball powder. It has worked really, really well. So I'm very curious to see what kind of velocity we're gonna get, what kind of performance we're gonna get. For the seven rem mag ammo, we're gonna use the Burger 180 grain hybrid. These things have shot very, very well. And then for the 300 wind mag, we have the new 200 grain 30 cal MKX bullet. This is both a match bullet and a hunting bullet. I'm also very curious how those are gonna perform as well. Okay, so what rifles am I gonna shoot? I have two copies of essentially the same rifle. This is the Bergara HMR Wilderness. We've got one in seven RAM mag, we've got one in 300 wind mag. Uh, this one has already been set up. This is the 300 wind mag. For the seven RAM mag, I still need to put a scope on it. And then it looks like we're missing a muzzle device on the 300 wind mag. Uh, I might shoot these suppressed. And I'm also thinking about putting Arca rails on both. So let me get these put together and we'll go shoot. So 
So shooting was fun as usual, and I'll note that both rifles magazine fed great. There were zero problems with headspace, nice smooth bolt close, just what I like to see. But we still have that one more data point that we need to gather for each set of brass, and that is how far forward did the shoulder blow? What I've done here is I've decapped a seven rem mag and I've decapped a 300 wind mag. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that same comparator. We're gonna zero it out on the fired brass. Okay, so it looks like that was already zeroed. Let's check that again just to make sure we're, we're consistent there. Yep, we're at zero. Okay, so now when we look at the new brass, this is the seven rem mag long the negative value will be how much the shoulder blew forward. And you see that, that says five thousandths of an inch. Now, if we were using regular seven rem mag brass, that would be 15 thousandths of an inch because what we saw in the numbers is the difference between the seven rem mag long and the 300 wind mag long was about 10 thousandths additional length based to datum on the shoulder. So that, really illustrates just how dramatic that is. Let's take the same measurement for the 300 wind mag. Okay, so we're gonna be quite a bit longer there, 155 thousandths longer. We're gonna zero that. We're gonna check that again. See if that settles down to the same spot. Yes, that's our fired case. Now we're gonna take a brand new case, 300 wind mag long, same thing, but not fired. And look at that. It's a difference of six and a half thousandths. So we had about five thousandths shoulder blow forward with the seven rem mag, and we had six and a half thousandths with the 300 wind mag. So this would have been 16 and a half thousandths with typical standard 300 wind mag brand new brass. So with longevity and with precision, we're definitely gonna be able to see a difference there. Now, we had five and six and a half thousandths shoulder blow forward with our fire forming. Now that we've fired it once, we can control that. We could do two and a half, we could do three, we could do four, depending on what we want, depending on what we're doing. You know, we might be hunting, these are both big game hunting cartridges, and then we might have a little bit more uh, tolerance there for grit in the gun, for just whatever unknown circumstances. If we're gonna be shooting this in a match, maybe we'll do something a little closer, one and a half to two and a half thousandths, something like that. So if you have a seven rem mag or a 300 win mag and you're loading your own ammunition, I would highly recommend to check out the Peterson seven rem mag long and 300 win mag long. It's gonna give you better longevity. It can definitely contribute to better precision as well. And if you're buying brand new brass, you know, Peterson brass is up there at the highest quality levels. And that does make a difference. It makes a difference with longevity, makes a difference with precision. So that I hope demystifies what these lungs are in the Magnum brass category. What I'd like to know is what did you think about the data that I showed? Were there things that you already understood where there's some new insights taking a look at the SAMI data and looking at uh, different brands of factory brass and comparing that to, to the Peterson Magnum Longs. I personally am a huge fan of this. I think it's a really great idea, but you know, I'm a precision person and I really like high quality and high level of control. So that is definitely no surprise. I'd love to know your opinions on all this. And if you've tried it, what rifle are you shooting it in? You know, what are you using it for? Is it for hunting or target? Drop that comment and we'll start the discussion. Thank you very much for watching. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching Ultimate Reloader on TV and wanna take advantage of free resources, exclusives, and hot deals, just hold your camera phone up to the QR code, tap on the link, fill out the information, boom, you're getting Ultimate Reloader emails. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. Thanks again for watching.